enjoins us to pray for our leaders, both spiritual and secular. First Timothy chapter two, first Timothy chapter two, verses one and two read. We must therefore faithfully and consistently pray for our spiritual and secular leaders for two reasons. Number one, so that they will not make mistakes in governance. Number two, so that we can live a peaceful and a holy life. We're going to lift up our voices, first and foremost pray for secular leaders at all levels, from the president to the least, to the, to the, to the counselors at the world level. We're going to pray that the Lord will direct their affairs. And more importantly, that the fear of God should be engrafted in their heart. Amen. Shall we lift up our voices tonight and pray for them? Pray for our leaders, the ones who can remember their names. Let's pray for them. Pray for the president. Pray for the vice president. Pray for governors of the 36 states. Pray for ministers. Pray for senators. Pray for those in the House of Rep. State House of Rep, Federal House of Rep. Chairman of local government, counselors at the world level. Let's pray for every one of them that God will direct their affairs, that they will lead us aright. One of the reasons is so that we can live a peaceful life, so that there can be peace. When they allow God to lead them, there will be peace all over. Let there be peace in the north, in the south, in the east, in the west. Pray for good governance. Pray for excellent leadership. Pray that they will do it as unto the Lord. They will put God first. They will consider the masses before themselves. Pray for them. That God should take away bad counselors from them. Everyone surrounding them with ulterior motive. God will take them away from all our leaders. Let's pray for them. Let's pray for them. Pray for our leaders. In the name that is above all names, we pray for all our leaders tonight. My Father, my Savior, that your will have every cause in their lives. That they will lead us aright, Lord. They will not bring about policies that, 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 that will put burdens on the common man. In the name of Jesus Christ, let your fear be engrafted in the heart of our leaders. Everyone leading us in this nation, head of parasitas, head of agencies, heads of ministries, Lord, let your fear be engrafted in their heart. Help them to lead us and lead us well. Help them to lead us and lead us aright. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In First Thessalonians, I think chapter three, Apostle Paul also said there. Said, finally, my brethren, pray for us for two reasons as well. 
Number one is that the word of the Lord may have free course in the life of men. Wherever the gospel is being preached, so that the word of the Lord will have free course without any hindrance, without any obstacles. We're going to pray all over the world where the word of God is being preached. Every obstacle, every hindrance that may debar people from receiving the word of the Lord shall be removed. Shall we go ahead and pray? Let's pray. Let's pray for our country, Nigeria. That the word of the Lord will have free course. Let the word of the Lord have free course. Let the word of the Lord have free course. In the lives of men. In all the nations. Let your word have a free course. In the lives of the hearer. If everyone who comes to church every Sunday. We allow the word of God to have a free course in their lives. There will be transformation. In our society, there will be transformation. There will be no need to talk about corruption again. Because the word of the Lord is taking root in the life of man. Let his word have a free course. In the life of man. And all over the nations. In Saudi Arabia, in Iran, in Iraq. In Cyprus, in Egypt, all over, in Asia, in Africa, in Europe, in North America, in South America, in Australia, all over the world. Let your world have a free course. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Number two, he said, and that we may be delivered. From unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith. We're going to pray for all men of God. All our spiritual leaders. Starting from the general overseer. To the least in all the churches. That in the name that is above all names. They will be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. That the Lord will shield them, surround them the way mountains around Jerusalem. Shall we go ahead and pray for all our spiritual leaders? Let's pray for all our spiritual leaders. Every attack from the pit of hell, that the Lord should thwart it. Every plan of the devil that is being planned against them, that the Lord should frustrate it. In the name of Jesus Christ, let's pray for our leaders in the body of Christ, all general overseers, all bishops, all pastors, every one of them, that the Lord should reach out to them in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's come back to our mission here, the redeemed Christian Church of God. Let's pray for our daddy Gio, physical strength, spiritual strength, energy from above. That the Lord should supply him in the name of Jesus. That he will not disappoint God in any way. God will not disappoint him. Let's pray for all our AGOs, Sargos, regional pastors, pastors in charge of promises and their assistants, pastors in charge of zones, areas and parishes and their spouses. Let's pray that the Lord will shield them. The way mountains around Jerusalem. He will surround them. He will protect them. He will take away bad counselors from them. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray for all the men and women of God in Grecian Church. That the Lord in his infinite mercy. Will fortify them. Will protect them. Will deliver them. The arrows are flies by day and by the night. Will not locate any of us. Every plan, every machinations of the enemy, let it be frustrated in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Finally, we're going to pray concerning our program starting on Thursday, a special program, and um, we'll be having the man of God, Evangelist Bey Gashita, 
minister to us in the course of this weekend, this Sunday. We're going to pray that the Lord, who has promised to do a new thing, will do a new thing in the life of his people. He will cause revival to happen in our lives, in our homes, in our businesses, in our academics, in everything pertaining to us. God will move in an unprecedented manner. Shall we go ahead and pray concerning Thursday? Pray for concerning Thursday. Pray concerning Friday. Pray concerning Sunday. That God's name will be glorified. God's name will be magnified. God's name will be exalted. The God of a new thing. The God of a new season. We come in his power. The God of a new season. We come in his majesty. He will visit his church. In the name of Jesus. He will bring about deliverance. He will bring about healing. He will bring about breakthroughs. In the life of men. Pending issues. Shall be dealt with. By the reason of this program. Issues have been long pending. Issues that evil men have given hope over. The Lord will rekindle our hope. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What you say you will do. That is what you will do. Ellie, we. Ellie, 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 what you say, what you say, you will do. That is what you will do. Every week. What you say, what you say, you will do. That is what you will do. Ellie, we, Ellie, Ellie, we, Ellie, we, Ellie, 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 we, Ellie, we, Ellie, Ellie, we, Ellie, we, Ellie, 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 we, Ellie, we, Ellie. You are not a man that you tell lies, neither the son of man that you renege on your promises. That which you say you will do, that is what you will do. Tonight in the lives of everyone present here, let your promises be fulfilled. Yeah. We have come to learn at your feet tonight. We will not go back the same way we have come. Yeah. Do the impossible here tonight. Yeah. Boost our faith. Yeah. Heal us. Yeah. Deliver us. Yeah. Set the captives free. Every secret prayer point, answer them in the open. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Holy Spirit, we welcome your presence here tonight. Amen. Do the work of a teacher. Amen. Open our hearts to receive from you. Amen. Thank you because you've answered our prayers. For those on their way, bring them here safely. Amen. Those who are watching us via internet, we ask you that you also reach out to them wherever they are. Amen. Bless be your holy name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen. Let your amen be louder. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Shake on with one or two people and say, Good evening. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God in the highest. We welcome you all in the name of the Almighty God. We'll continue with our series tonight. Who can remind us what's is the topic we've been looking at for 
over a month now. Yes, sir. Faith. Thank you. Faith. Last week, we considered how to obtain faith. Uh, for the benefit of those who are probably joining us for the very first time, uh, we defined faith in so many ways as believing God, simple trust, having simple trust and confidence in God. We said faith is that leaning of the entire human personality on God in absolute trust and confidence, the leaning of the entire human personality on God in absolute trust and confidence. Uh, time will not permit us to look at the rest of the definitions. We said two words describe our faith, and that's confidence and certainty. We also look at faith as being a real thing. Faith has been a real thing. The assurance of things we're hoping for. The evidence of things that we cannot see. Evidence of things that you have not received. You already have the evidence. That is faith. We said, talking about the importance of faith, we said we are saved by faith. That we must also live by faith. For the word of God says, the just shall live by faith. We also said that there is no way we can please God without faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. And the Bible also makes us to understand the book of Revelation chapter 4, I think verse 11, that we are created to give God pleasure. Praise God. So for you to give God pleasure, you must have faith. Because you can't please God without faith. We also mentioned that faith gives us the strength to keep going in life. There may be distractions. There may be things that um, may want to cost us our faith. But because we have faith in us, that faith gives us strength to keep going. The Word of God tells us to have faith in God and Jesus and also to have faith in his word. And uh, I think lastly, last um, Tuesday, we talked about how to obtain faith. Is someone in the house this evening ready to tell us how to obtain faith? How should we obtain faith? Or how can we obtain faith? Anybody? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. We can obtain faith in five different ways. Mm. Number one, you can, it's a gift from God. It's a gift from God, meaning that? Meaning that in, 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 in Romans chapter 12, verse 3, which says do, that the grace being given to me is not of me, but of God that giveth faith as a gift. Hallelujah. And number two is we can pray for faith. You can pray for faith. So that one depends on which which was talking about Mark Mark twenty Mark twenty two. It can be Mark okay. twenty two. Um, Mark nine. The last chapter in Mark is sixteen. Yes, Mark nine twenty two to twenty nine, which was talking where which Jesus Christ was talking about. And there was this man that his son was possessed with demon, and they took him to Jesus Christ and mm, took him to his disciple, and they could not heal, him, cast out the demon, and eventually. Then Jesus did, and the, go to the next point. God bless you. Yeah, the third one was the third one was that we can hear by hearing the word the of word God. Of God. Yeah, and the fourth one is hear, by the Bible passage. <laughs> the, the, Romans ten seventeen. Okay. Yes, John is, John four John four. Okay. Wants us to say something about that. And number four is we can hear we can hear and read. By receptive and understanding spirit. Spirit, thank you. Yeah. And the fifth of it is by testimony of faith. By listening to testimonies of faith. Let's celebrate our brother. 
Unfortunately, I do not have a gift with me here tonight. But I promise you next Tuesday. Praise the Lord. Am I seeing your hand? Is there another person raising his hand? Okay. All right, thank you. God bless you, my brother. All right, tonight we will talk about what faith can do. But in addition to what you have said, the 6 to 1, miracles also glorify God's power and often inspire faith. Miracles glorify God's power and it often inspire faith. In other words, faith is contagious. When you listen to the testimony of somebody, your own faith will be boosted or can be boosted. Praise the Lord. The first thing we will be looking at tonight is that faith grows. Shall we say faith grows? One more time. Faith grows. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4 reads, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith does what? Groweth how? Exceedingly. Apostle Paul was addressing the church, the Thessalonians here. He said, we are bound to give thanks to you, I mean to God, on your behalf. Always. Because each time we hear a report from your church, we could see the evidence there that your faith grows. Not stuntedly, but how? Exceedingly. So it's, it's glaring we can see. That tells us that from time to time, our faith is supposed to grow. Praise God. We are meant to grow in faith. Uh, if, for example, your faith has been healing headache, it is expected that it will move to a level where that faith will be able to heal malaria and so on and so forth. Praise the Lord. So their faith grows. Their faith grew and it was evidence. Everyone that has had contact with them knew that their faith was growing. Tonight, if we have to ask us, is our faith growing? Is our faith growing? Faith is meant to grow. We are not meant to remain on a particular spot. I pray that God will help our faith tonight and grow our faith in the name of Jesus Christ. But we need to take some steps. We started later on by talking about how to obtain faith. We need to listen to the word of God. We need to hear the word of God. We need to pray about it. We need to ask for it. Because we started by saying that it's a gift from God. So for your faith to grow, you must listen to the word of God. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, it says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. Number two, becoming strengthened and steadfast in faith. Becoming strengthened and steadfast in faith, your faith grows to a level that you become strengthened and steadfast. When we say something is steadfast, it means that it's unwavering, isn't it? It's unshakable, isn't it? Unperturbed. Give me another word. Stable. Now, is it in the absence of storms? Is it in the absence of storms? No. In the presence of storms. In the presence of disasters. In the presence of economic hardship. Name it. We must be strengthened and 
be steadfast in the faith. There are people who have asked God for one or two things. And because God has not done it, they back down or they backslid. That's not a faith that has been strengthened. But if your faith has been strengthened, even when you have not seen that thing, you will be stable. Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 14, verse 22. And 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Acts 14, 22. 14, 22 says, Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. In spite of persecution, they should continue in the faith. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 says, Be alert and on your guard. Stand firm. In what? In your faith. Stand firm in your faith. Act like men and be courageous. Grow in strength. Colossians chapter 1 verse 23. Colossians chapter 1 verse 23. And this he will do. Provided that you continue to stay with and in the faith. Now what is it that he will do? Go to 22. Verse 22, the verse before 23, okay? Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. Give me amplified version, amplified. Yet now has Christ the Messiah reconciled you to God in the body of his flesh through death. In order to present you holy, you are reconciled to God through the death of Christ. Why? So that you can be presented holy and faultless and irreproachable in God's presence. And verse 23 says this will be fulfilled. 23, 23. And this he will do, presenting you holy before God. He will do, provided that you continue to stay with and in the faith in Christ. Well grounded and settled and steadfast, not shifting or moving away from the hope. Praise the Lord. Christ can only present us holy and unblameable before the Father, if only we remain stable. We stay in the faith. I pray that God will keep us and make us stand till the very end. In Jesus' mighty name. Continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, we're not going to read because of our time. The next one, we should have faith when we pray. We should have faith when we pray. The first one says faith grows. The second one says becoming strengthened in faith. And the third one says we should have faith when we pray. Somebody said, I think, the penultimate Tuesday that um, anybody can pray. Can we remember that? The fellow said anybody can pray. But it's not everyone who prays have faith. Praise the Lord. So we are being challenged here tonight. It's not enough for you to pray only. You must also have what? Have faith. We should have faith when we pray. Matthew 21. Matthew 21 verses 21 and 22. Mark eleven twenty four. Mark eleven twenty four. Romans 4, 21. Romans 4, 21. Hebrews 10, 22. Hebrews 10, 22. 
and James 1, 5 and 6. James 1, 5 and 6. I read Matthew 21, 22. Jesus answered, Matthew 21. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Verse 22. And all things whatsoever ye ask, in what? In prayer. Believing, ye shall receive. How many things? Does it include healing? Financial breakthroughs? Job? Children? Traveling abroad? Securing your visa? All things. And all things whatsoever, ye shall ask in prayer. Believing, ye shall receive. Praise God. Praise the Lord. 11.24 of Mark. What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them. You know, there is emphasis on faith here. Like I said earlier, anyone can pray. But when you don't have faith to back up your prayers, it will be, it will lose steam, it will have power, it will have strength. But when you back up your prayer with faith, Christ says to us here that we shall receive answers to it. I pray for us tonight that as we ask God, there will be speedy answers in Jesus' mighty name. Romans 4.21 says, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. You know, having faith is also believing that what God has promised, he is able to fulfill it. I think Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, says that he is not a man that you tell lies, that you lie. Yeah, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, looking from Genesis to Revelation, has he said, and shall he not do it? Is there anything he has said before that he not do? Or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Hebrews 10, 22 says, let us draw near in full assurance of faith. Whenever you approach God in prayers, have the full assurance of your faith. Hebrews 10, 22. James 1, 5 and 6. Summary says, ask of God. Ask in faith and nothing wavering. Can you give us that in message version? James 1, 5 and and six. Thank you. If you don't know what you are doing, pray to the Father. He loves to help. You will get his help and won't be condescended to when you ask for it. Verse six. Ask boldly, believingly, without a second thought. Can he do it? Can he not do it? Will he do it? Will he not do it? Can I depend on him? Should I not depend on him? Has he failed before? Will he fail me? Without a second thought, people who worry their prayers are like wind-waved waves. Praise God. Is that people who worry their prayers? So when you doubt God, what are you doing? You are worrying your prayers. <laughs> Praise God. So when you say, you are worrying me. You are worrying me, leave me alone. Mean that you are troubling that person. So you can pray and be the troubler of your prayer. 
Because when you have prayed, just like planting a seed, a farmer plants a seed and he goes there every day to open up the ground. What's he doing? He's worrying that seed. And that seed will never grow. Praise God. So what the Bible is telling us here is that when we pray, don't worry your prayers. Leave the prayer with God. And begin to thank God over that thing. Instead of you thinking over and over again, has he done it? Have we not, will we not do it? Verse 7, say, don't think you are going to get anything from the master that way. When you worry your prayer, you can't get anything. Just like the illustration of the farmer I gave earlier on. When a farmer goes to the farm every day, that this grain of corn that I planted yesterday, let me see how it's doing. You open it up today and cover it back. Tomorrow you go back there to open it up. It won't grow. It won't sprout. Praise the Lord. A drift at sea, keeping all your options open. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. The next thing we're going to look at is the rewards, blessings, and fruits of faith. The rewards. If you call it the rewards, you're okay. If you call it the blessings, you're okay. If you call it the fruits, you're okay. If you call it the results of faith, it's okay. Hebrews 11.6, we have read this time without number. Say, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever will come near to God must, bracket open, necessarily, must necessarily believe that God exists and that he is the rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek him. The first benefit or reward or blessing or fruit of faith is access to God. Shall we say it together? Say it a few minutes. Access to God. Faith gives you access to God. Romans chapter 5, verse 2. Romans 5, 2 says, Through him also we have our access, that is entrance or introduction. Praise God. Through him also we have our access, we have our entrance, we have our introduction. How? By faith into this grace, state of God's favor, in which we firmly and safely stand. And let us rejoice and exult in our hope of experiencing and enjoying the glory of God. Faith gives us access into the presence of God. Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 11 and 12. This is in accordance with the terms of the eternal and timeless purpose which he has realized and carried into effect in the person of Christ Jesus our Lord. Verse 12, in whom, because of what? Because of our faith in him, we dare to have the boldness, that is the courage and confidence of free access and unreserved approach to God and freedom without fear. Praise God. I think we should stop here tonight for our time. Let's listen to one or two comments or questions. Any questions? Any questions?
Any contribution? Any experience? No questions. We understand everything. We don't understand at all. Okay. One, two. Yeah, give the microphone to our brother here. If you, my question goes like this. If you've prayed and you've been having doubt because God has not done what you want, you've been, just like you said, troubling him. Troubling your prayer. Troubling my prayer. Mm. Can you still go back and pray that God should forgive you for troubling your prayer and if he will still go ahead with his work? Of course. He's a loving father. If, if you know that you have doubted him, you go back to him. Now this time around you have made up your mind that you're not going to doubt him again. He will receive you and listen to you. Yes, ma'am. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sir, for the exhortation. When you said experience mm. that we want to share, and um, it just came to my mind. Um, I think it was the Friday, the Holy Ghost, during the convention. I'd been trying to get my friend visa before then, and there's been a lot of, there had been a lot of problem at the uh, center they used. So we had sent in our <coughs> visa application and all that, but we were traveling on a Monday, and this was Friday. I was caught between, I was going to camp. So I said, well, God, I've handed this thing over to you. And I said, I can't wait, I had to leave to camp. Although I made a case that we're traveling on Monday, Monday. and that on Sunday, actually, and that we needed to just get the visa we had bought our ticket, we can't afford to change. I think and I, your passport was with them? Passport was with them. Everything was with them. So there was no other way. But, so I just left somebody there. I said, well, me, I have to go. I'm not going to wait back, you know, from going to camp. And this was already like 2 o'clock. And you know that day, traffic and all of that. So I left. But, and in faith, I moved on. But to God be the glory. Before I got to camp... I you. got the text <laughs> that the visa the was ready. In fact, I was not among, because the day before I was there, people who had submitted long before me, they were traveling that same day. They were still there. They were not going to receive their visas and all of that. But to the glory of God, before we got to camp, we got the text that our visas were ready. Okay. What am I saying in essence is that I just left God to handle it and I decided to go. And of course, before... I even got to the camp, he was able to do it. And I think that's an experience of uh, me, if, if faith in God. Yeah, if, if you've had waited, well, it may still <laughs> come out, but you may not be able to get to camp. Exactly. That and you, is you will it. also be feeling guilty that ah, if I had known. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, thank you for sharing your experience with us, man. Any other person? Questions, contribution, experiences? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. The, we had said today that faith grows, right? So we can train ourselves to grow our faith. Um, can faith also diminish? Can it, um, can it reduce? If yes, well, what, what are the things that we, we do that reduces our faith? What is the opposite of growth? Maybe we should go to elementary biology now. <laughs> In elementary biology, one of the characteristics of a living thing yes. is that it grows. Living things grow. Don't sit down. Hold your microphone and stand. <laughs> you know, that's, that's one of the characteristic features of every living thing. Yes. Now, every living thing also can die. Praise God. So faith can die. Okay. We, we said how we, we mentioned five, I brother nominated the five ways by which you can obtain faith. If you look at it covertly, that can also kill your faith. Okay. Praise God. Number one, faith is a gift, we said. Yeah. If you ask from God, you will obtain faith. If you don't ask, you may not have. If you, if you don't ask that the one you have should grow, it may not grow. Yeah, 
If you do not exercise your faith, if you don't exercise your faith, it may not grow. What she did was that she exercised her faith. She was traveling on a Sunday. And that was a Friday. If it doesn't come out that day, that means she's not traveling. Even when you have made up your mind, okay, I'm not even going to Schengen country. I want to go to Europe. Your, your passport is there. But she exercised her faith. Next time, I'm sure if it's America Embassy, she will also grow, go to Ifewara this time around. <laughs> Praise God. She exercised her faith. So if you don't exercise your faith, your faith may diminish or will diminish. Then we also mention that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you do not hear the word of God, because if you stay outside there, you will hear. You hear a lot of things. Particularly things, fear, that we still fear in you. And fear is the opposite of faith. So when you accommodate fear, your faith goes down. So in so many ways, faith can diminish, faith can finally die. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. That's all. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Just to add to that, sir, in um, James 2.17, um, I actually love the AMPC version that came up. It says, so also faith, if it does not have works, put in parentheses, deeds and action of obedience to back it up, by itself is destitute of power. Mm. It puts in there inoperative, dead. So, thank you. All right. Shall we just rise to our feet? I don't know the state that you are in. Maybe you do not have faith at all. Or you have the faith that is as little as a mustard seed. Maybe you have faith in some areas. But in another area, you do not have faith. Or you have a little faith. You have a wavering faith. I want you to talk to the Lord tonight. Help my unbelief. Increase my faith. Increase my faith. Do not allow my faith to die. Do not allow my faith to go down. Increase my faith. Increase my faith. Increase my faith. Or maybe you have doubted God in some areas. You have doubted him. You may not set out to doubt him, but somehow, because of storm, the storms of life, because of distractions here and there, because of prayer here and there, you begin to tilt towards another area. Tell the Lord tonight that you are sorry. I have come. I have come. That you may rekindle my faith. Help my faith. Grow my faith. Help me to exercise my faith. As I live here tonight, help me to exercise my faith. Help me to exercise my faith. Come what me. Help me to exercise my faith. Shall we pray to the Lord tonight? Help me to exercise my faith. Without faith, no one can receive anything from God. Help me not to worry my prayers again. We've just read in the Amplified Version that when you pray without believing, you only worry your prayers. Help me not to worry my prayers. Some of us are prayer warriors. W-O, not W-A now. Help me not to worry my prayers. Help me not to worry my prayers. After praying, give me a settled mind that you have done it. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me not to worry my prayers.
Make me a prayer warrior of Fadura Jagun. I'm not the one that worries prayer. Help me tonight. Let me thy wall he let me he let me thy wall thy wall thy wall as he let me has saved me in thy wall has saved me whole has made me whole Thy word has made me whole. Made me whole. Thy word. Thy word. Thy word. Oh, thy word. Thy word has made me whole. Maybe you are here tonight. You are yet to give your life to Christ. The first stage is the stage of salvation. Then from then you begin to build up your faith. We want to give you the opportunity. Just raise your right hand wherever you are. I will pray for you. You have not given your life to Christ. And you want to give your life to Christ tonight. If you are raising the hand, please raise it very well. Anybody like that? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, we want to thank you tonight. We bless your holy name for the simplicity of your word. We appreciate you, King of Glory, because we are living here, men and women of faith. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Whatever that has been creating fear in our heart tonight, please banish it out. Replace it with your faith. Grow your faith in us. Let your faith strengthen us. Lord, we also make the promise that we will no longer be worrying our prayers. Every prayer point that we raise will lead to rest because we have the assurance that you have answered us already. Thank you because you have answered our prayers. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you receive it, shout a love, the amen.